Tetsuro Taira really is the scourge of Latin America. There is not a single Mexican or Mexican-American man that the UFC will put in front of him that he won't find a way to knock down or submit. And he's busted through every last Mexican they can possibly give him at flyweight, and now he's coming for Brazil. Pantoja! Let's go, Tetsuro Tyra. Absolutely great performance at the latest UFC Fight Night insert number. Hmm. <laughs> Where are my Mexicans at? Where are the Mexicans at? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I must be taken! Ah, I'm super happy. We'll run through my full card recap here. Just before we get into it, I want to give a overview of my picks for anyone who's just interested in that, as well as a shout out to the winner of our topology event. So I went eight and three on picks. I got the Jekka Saragi pick wrong. Great uh, dog, Weston Wilson, great dog performance there. I got the... High stand fight wrong, like pretty well everyone did. I mean, he was a massive dog. That was a great dog, best dog performance on the card. And I also got the Timothy Kuwamba Almeida pick wrong. Only really bad pick there. So uh, let's give a shout out here to the winner of the Topology event. If you guys don't know what the Topology is, it's just like a fantasy MMA picks leaderboard. If you want to join, there's a link in the description of this video. Uh, it's free to play, free to join. We have the second biggest group on the site. And the winner of this week's event was Stinky Babas. Great win. Uh, great picks, dude. And uh, same with Skyburners Go and everyone else here on this list. That's awesome, guys. So let's start out the recap. I'm just going to start from the top of the card and work down as opposed to start with the least important fights at the bottom. So let's talk about Tyra versus Perez. Listen, I was literally saying to my chat before he came out, uh, I was like, man, first of all, Someone was saying Perez is like a really big flyweight, and it's one. Th it's okay to say that, like it's not a bad take or anything. But the saying like you know as big as Figgy and stuff like that. I was watching the face-offs, and I was actually surprised because yeah, Perez. I don't think he's the biggest flyweight or anything, but he's not a small guy. And Tyra mogged him. Like neither guy are Asuama Baev, right? Who's like a five foot three flyweight or five foot four flyweight, and he was fighting that six foot flyweight. In this one, it was uh, two. Decently sized five weights. Tyre is the bigger guy, stronger guy, look less sucked out, less like bones poking out, just a more filled out frame. He's got that Okinawan build that lets him, and he's young, obviously, so he can get that cut uh, really nice, I guess. He's got that layer of muscle. Um, whatever, regardless. I thought he looked excellent at the cut, and he looked like the bigger man, and he came out there, and he fought really well, man, because Perez was bringing it to him. Perez was landing some... Uh, some bombs on him, some hooks, ripping to his body, uppercuts, all sorts of stuff, low kicks. But um, Therese, uh, Perez fought actually a really good round. I would have scored the first round for Perez just slightly, right? Uh, Tayera was in on it. And a lot of the fight, the biggest moments were actually happening in the clinch. And Tayera was actually doing good in the clinch. Um, I like to see it. I was saying to my child, I'm like, I want to see this guy's chin tested. And, well, we didn't see him get wobbled. He was definitely in positions where, like, Nikolai would have been out, like, five times over, right, from Perez landing on him in that first round. Just a little, what, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's why I was pretty confident in Tyra taking that one, whether, however it went, like, long or, I didn't pick him by submission. I picked him by decision. But it's good to see him uh, get that. Sorry, he got a TKO. No one picked him by TKO. So let's just talk about that for a second. Well, it is definitely fluky. It's not the worst fluke, right? It's not quite like, like, I'll even admit it. It's not like the Aspinall knee. It's not like the, the Fiziev knee that we saw recently. Um, it's much more like Ortega's arm versus Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a legitimate TKO or whatever you want to call it for a yeah, year. Yeah. He put the arm in the position to do that, like, fully, right? It wasn't like Tom just falling back on his knee and blowing it out, or Gazi or Fiziev taking that weird step against Gamera and his knee just popping, right? Which is very, very, very fluky. They're almost like, ah, it's not even, it's like, what the heck happened here? But in this fight, first of all, well, yeah, Tyre was probably down around. I'm not 100% sure, actually, what this, the judges scored it. Um, he came out in the second and didn't leave it up to anything, right? No need for a scorecard because... He took the back, man, and it was like, holy crap, like a little Japanese capuchin, man, just getting up there, completely dominant. 
Uh, he was cooked, and I noticed that in the first round that Tyre was really willing to engage in those clinches, and it was actually Perez trying to get out of them and break them once Tyre had started. He like Perez was arguably getting the better of them. And they were clinching right from like the start of the first, right? Um, a little bit stronger, it seemed like, but it seemed like Tyre was... Perez was very aware that Tayura was able to get the better positions, and he did in the second, took that back, Perez was cooked, he was like on the back, standing rear naked attempts, right, and then he had that body triangle in with the foot weaved or threaded in between the knee, so once again, he put all the pressure and all the, he put everything together to lead to that injury, would it have happened to someone else? Not necessarily. Right, so it's still semi fluky. I think it's a good win though, and it was a good performance. We got to see enough out of Tayera. It's not just like Perez took a step after winning a round, and now Tayera won like an almost undeserved thing. Totally deserves to win, and I can't wait to see him fight Pantoja because he's basically in contender status right now. So let's go. I don't think he needs another fight. Do you guys? Let me know what you think in the comment below. Let's feed Pantoja to Tayera. He's undefeated against Latinos, and I think he'll get it done. All right, let's talk about the co-main event. This is uh, Miles Johns versus Douglas Silva de Andrade. And uh, one of my more sketchy picks. I was a little bit nervous on this one, co-main. It's nice. I swept the co-main and main. Uh, probably been a minute since I've done that. But listen, I picked Miles Johns by decision. Perfect pick, actually. And he, he won that fight. Like, it was not a robbery. There was, like, one robber in the card. We'll talk about that later. It's a bit down. Um, the, the Quinlan Fugit fight, arguably, I scored it for Quinlan. Uh, but anyway, Miles Johns uh, fought a good fight, man. Um, won the first two rounds, in my opinion, at least. And um, was uh, landed some real big cracking shots on Silva de Andrade. Even in the third. You could have probably scored that whole fight for him, I think. Uh, uh, right? And um, regardless, it doesn't matter. Uh, he won the fight. It was clear for him. I don't think he could have scored it for Douglas Silva de Andrade. Um, Miles Johns showed some nice, you know, like, hey, you don't need to bet on the guy uh, to get a knockout being in a... Gamer like that, because I was really, I was like, if it goes long, Douglas De Silva, the Andrade will win it, probably, just based on it, but, uh, bro is almost, like, too shredded, and he's got, like, that super low body fat down there at Bantamweight, um, to where, yeah, 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 dude, Miles Johns took it, so whatever, I don't really have much more to say, honestly, there's not the greatest fights on this card, K Kuamba versus Almeida, like I said earlier in the video, I picked him, I think Kuamba, I do like his straights and stuff like that, but bro has, like, pillow fist, he was landing flush combinations and stuff on Almeida, had zero effect zero effect like i think the only moment kuamba really won in that fight was like a takedown like later in the third it was like with a minute to go it was it would have been his only opportunity to win that fight because he was completely down three rounds um but i think judges scored at 29 28 almeida which is weird i had it all three rounds for um cool from for almeida not just two, and arguably in that first, I don't think it was a 10-8 because Kuamba was in it enough, but Kuamba got dropped, bro. He was getting sparked by, like, nasty rights from Almeida, just put on his butt, but he had really quick recovery, right? He's a tough guy. That is why I picked him in this fight. Good win. Hey, Kuamba literally making Almeida look like some, like, really skilled fighter. Let's move down to high stand versus armfield. Best fight of the night. Fight of the night, in my personal opinion. It was crazy back and forth. Extremely fun. Uh, went into the third uh, where High Stand, the dog, got the finish. And in the second, Armfield nearly finished him. And we were even talking about this in my chat. We're like, hey, if this was uh, Herzog, Beta Boy Herzog, or uh, Mark Not So God, or they would have stopped that fight, and it would have been Armfield's fight, who I had picked, who a lot of people had picked. But I was even saying this. I'm like, I'm super happy it didn't happen. I'm really happy for High Stand. Love when fights like this happen. This is why I love the sport. First of all, this fight was an excellent, like, offensive display of just pure MMA. The guys were wrestling, scrambling, trying to go for submissions, cracking each other. It was like a mix of everything. It wasn't just some kickboxing match, and it wasn't just some wrestling match. You know what I mean? It was a great, and it was just all offense. Someone had said in my chat, which is absolutely true. It was all offense. Both these guys just going for it. It was really fun. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, the biggest moment to me was that, yeah, if a stupid ref had to stop that fight in the second after uh, Highstand got pretty badly hurt and was eating follow-up shots, he wouldn't have been able to have a comeback victory. I actually had high stand up um, like the first round and then I think the second round, but he did get knocked. So you had to have that 1-1 one, one going into the third. Really competitive, really fun. And high stand was just like, I'm taking this away from the judges. Friggin' uh, gonna submit this guy. 
But yeah, that high stand arm field fight is a perfect example of why late stoppages are better than early stoppages. In my personal opinion, early stoppages are the worst mistake a ref can make. Late stoppages, people are just, you know, like, they're not that bad. Okay, let's move on down to Johnson versus Asu. This is the six foot Jose Johnson versus the five foot four or whatever Asu Almabayev. Asu Almabayev grapple, great thumb, absolutely dominated him. Johnson didn't really have anything for him. First round, Asu was pretty much able to secure the takedowns. And well, Johnson had a very like impressive butterfly guard with those massive legs up at, uh, down at 125, being six foot tall. He wasn't really able to do anything with it. I know he was able to get up at moments, but he was pretty much. As he was able to take him down and control him at will, and uh, Johnson was just like wasting energy with the butterfly guard, just like basically airplaning his little son, Asu Amabaya. Like your dad used to, you know, your dad used to put you up in his feet and pretend you're an airplane. That's basically all Johnson was doing because he'd just do that and then he would not do any. There's no urgency to like get out, get away, change position. He'd just let Asu fall back on him, and Asu was getting actually like decent ground and pound off and stuff like that. Took it, taking the back and stuff. I mean, Johnson was able to get some reversals at some points in the fights, but Asu was always able to get the position back. Um, he called out Kaikar France. I like that fight. Uh, I don't mind that at all. Let's see it happen, to be honest, because he does look impressive. He's like 20 and 2 now or something, this guy. So I know, obviously, a lot of those wins aren't going to be the most impressive on the regional scene out in like Central Asia, but I don't know, bro completely manhandled this Johnson guy. And let's move down to Quinlan versus Fit Fugit now. Now, I picked Fugit. I was not impressed by his performance in the slightest. Not that I was really crazy impressed by Quinlan, but I did think Quinlan uh, definitely took the first round. It was like no debate, no question about it in my mind. And then I guess, yeah, like the third round, 100% Fugit as well because Quinlan wasn't really throwing, I guess. Uh, you know, the commentary is saying some stuff about his arms being hurt from Fugit, all the Fugit's kicks, I guess. He could have just been tired. Second round, I don't know, whatever. I guess it could have gone either way. So that's why it's not like the worst robbery at all. I do. I personally would have scored the second round for Quinlan. I just thought he was landing the more effective strikes. I guess if you get through more, whatever. It, whatever. Good. No, not a good win. Quinlan's probably caught, unfortunately, off that one. And he's an entertaining fighter at the end of the day. Like, he'll put on good performances and he'll get finished fun. But uh, not good performances. We'll put on fun performances and he'll get finished fun. Uh, and this Fugit guy, I don't know, dude. He's already lost. He's a Mike Mallet victim at the end of the day. And uh, now with kind of a gifted decision over Quinlan, let's see where he goes from here. I did pick him, so I'm happy with that, I guess. All right, Flick versus Manas. Uh, this was a boring fight. This was a boring fight. Very patient fight. Uh, pretty dominant, I would say, for Manas there. Like, uh, Flick didn't really have much for him. Manus was doing a really good job with the distance management and just working a jab, working with his rangy shots, strikes. Um, yeah, listen, I'm not gonna, hey, this might have been one of the most boring fights on the card, honestly, but it was actually a good win for Manus at the end of the day, I guess, yes. So, better than Fugit's win over Quinlan. Let's go down to Judy's versus Fernandez. You know what, both WMMA fights we had on this card were uh, good scraps, good scrappy fights. Uh, I had Fernandez winning this one. She did take it. I didn't pay the craziest amount of attention to it. I know Fernandez was coming out swinging. was actually, like, bullying Judice, but she kind of gassed towards the end of the first, and Judice came back, like, fully. And that's what I liked about both. Like, all four women on the card, uh, on this card, were willing to fight for their money and your money if you're a betting person. I'm not, personally, but you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, like... A lot of women, or even male fighters, will get bullied for, like, four minutes of a round, and they w won't have that fighting instinct to come back in. They just kind of break. Judice did not, and... Um, she was in it for the whole fight. There was an eye poke from Fernandez, worth noting, in the second. It was a pretty nasty eye poke, and um, yeah, she took the fight. So maybe contribute to that, but I don't know. Now, Jack covers Weston Wilson. This might be a, this is like the underrated standout performance of the card. Uh, Weston Wilson, fraud checking a guy I was pretty high on. Uh, Jekka, I like Jekka. I thought he had some nice power. Uh, definitely a little bit reckless, but really explosive and powerful. And I thought he was going to be able to get it done over Weston Wilson. Nope. Weston Wilson choked his rat out, dude. Uh, completely dominated him. He got like the triangle up, had Jekka panicking, was like trying to isolate an arm. And literally just, it was like, he tapped to the triangle, not to the arm. So, Jack has cooked, bro. And then Wonder Boy slapping Weston Wilson on the booty. What is Wester, well, What is Wonder Boy doing at that academy down in uh, uh, the Carolinas? But 
It was a great standout underdog performance. Good couple dogs barking on tonight's card for sure. So good, good win from Weston Wilson. Um, I do hope Jacka can rebound, though. I like Jacka, and uh, we'll see what happens with him. At this point, he's not going anywhere, and he's an interesting, funny character. And then uh, we had Costa versus Nurdin Beke. Now, I had uh, Nurdin Beke winning this one. Or sorry, I sorry, I had uh, Costa winning this one by decision. Got it done by decision. Um, he really showed a decent uh, fight IQ in this fight. He weathered Shailen Nurdin Beke's storm. Uh, now, not much happened in the first round. You could actually have scored it for Costa. It probably would have went to Nurdin Beke simply on the fact that Costa didn't do quite enough. And Shailen had a lot of control, but Shailen doesn't, like, throw when he gets con the control. So he did get, like, the takedown. Costa was willing to kind of accept that because he has a very active, like, defensive guard. And against a guy like Shailen in the back, who's not even going to throw anyway, even if you don't. It's like, okay, whatever. So first round, whatever. You could just pfft, Shailen, right? And then uh, second round, Melk started to take over after Shailen basically ran out of his, like, seven minutes of cardio. So kind of around the halfway mark, a little bit past that, Melk really started to come into his own and started to dominate. Uh, Shailen uh, Nunebeke, he was able to like secure the body locks and stuff like that. And then, uh, oh, sorry, he got the rear naked choke. Uh, no, 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 he didn't. He didn't. Yes, he did. I'm wrong. Sorry, he didn't get the prediction. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm recording this in the morning. He didn't get the decision. He got the rear naked choke in the third round. Um, and had a really good post-fight interview. I love this post-fight interview because it was broken English, incoherent nonsense. Like, 2% of it made sense. I don't think his translator even understood anything he was trying to say. He's like, Jamie and the, you know, the star and uh, Jacquem, the, the division, uh, the already uh, energy. And she was freaking crazy. And then Bisbean called him Shailen near the Becca, dude. Like, honestly, how drunk and brain dead. Like, I'm not going to beat the guy up for it too much because it's just a simple mistake and it's like funny at the end of the day. But it's like, why are the UFC get letting him, of all people, do these interviews in the ring when it's like Dominic Cruz wouldn't make that mistake, you feel me? Definitely John Gooden wouldn't. So um, it's a bit disrespectful at the end of the day to be sitting there just memorizing some Chinese guy's name and then you can't even tell like, hey, this is Melchizedek Alcosta. Obviously, I know Shailen Nurebeka looks like he should be a German. Sounds like he should be a German. <laughs> Obviously not... Uh, Melchizedek Alcosta, the Brazilian, who's speaking Portuguese to you right now. But anyway, uh, I'll give Michael Bisbee a pass on that. So we have the last fight I'm going to talk about. First fight of the actual event. This was the curtain jerker on the early prelims. Knudsen versus Palastri. Now, this was like Palastri's debut or something, and Knudsen's sophomore performance in the UFC, sophomore fight, second fight in the UFC. And uh, they both came out absolutely swinging and banging. It was like Knudsen was bullying the crap out of her. That's what I was meaning when I was talking about the... Um, other WMMA fight was it was similar to that it was like the a more experienced woman in the UFC I think was coming out bullying her but then uh, Newton like all respect to Palastri I want to see her fight again for sure because she was exciting she was game and she actually ended up getting a late takedown after getting bullied for like four minutes and thirty seconds and I was like she's gonna be broken there's no way she's gonna take this from Newton gets the ground and pound and just full, or full mount and gets blasting ground and pound off on her um. But I think she even split Newton open on the eye in the second and stuff like that. Now, it should have went to Newton, but it was a close fight. Newton was not making that, like, the second and third round, she was not making it close. Like, if it had gone to Plastry, she couldn't have really got upset. And I would have been like, okay, whatever. Like, judges are on one a little bit tonight. I still thought it was Newton's fight, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, it was a good, scrappy WMMA fight at the end of the day. And that's all I have to say about the card. So, well, it wasn't the most entertaining event it was a decent apex card at the end of the day i thought it was good there's some sus stuff you know with the new gloves we don't seem to be getting as many knockouts now but it could just be coincidental we still have to wait a little bit longer uh, let's see how things go at the Riyadh card and ufc 303 which i'll be live for and if you want to see any of my live reactions for this event you can find the live stream linked in the description of this video like you can find the topology as well as my instagram follow me on instagram and drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it Subscribe if you're new and turn the bell notification on so you don't miss a single thing. So the Pharisees are on me, they're behind me, they're throwing stones at me right now. We gotta dip, we gotta get out of here right now. Demon possessed man on my right, I'm praying over him right now. He's cracked, he's cracked. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members and a special shout out to my Lion Tier members. I appreciate each and every one of you and without all you guys, the channel would not be possible. Demon Bobby. Demon Mommy.